Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Um, I've been wanting to do this for a while. As you guys know, I read a ton and I really wanted to take an opportunity to share some of my knowledge, share some of the stuff that I'm learning from these books and hopefully with you. Um, I know some people learn more from auditory or from visuals and I think books are great. Books allow you to engage with authors that you don't necessarily have access to. Like, for example, Tony Robbins, I, at this point in my career, really couldn't afford the four or $5,000 experience with him. But reading his books, I get to take a lot of that insight. And so I wanted to give you guys some of that uh, excitement, some of that opportunity that, that I get from, from reading. And so I want to share that out with you. And I'm going to try and do this on a you know, fairly regular basis every week, every couple weeks, and keep an eye out. Um, typically, there'll be business books, but... I, you know, I'm going to share a lot of different books. Sometimes I, I listen to books. Sometimes I read books. And I'm going to share both of those. As well as some, uh, some different things from podcasts and websites. And really want to help you guys learn more. Uh, because I'm very much an input person. And I want to help getting some of that out to the rest of you. So, this week, um, I'm going to start with my first book. Here's how it's going to work. I, I'm going to talk a little bit about the book, give you some general insights about the author and the book that I read. I'll then uh, jump through a summary of the book and then I'll talk a little bit about the top things that I've learned. And I want to try and keep these relatively short within a few minutes, five, you know, five minutes or so. So here's the first book. I read his book from Bud DeBoss. We have uh, Kevin Ukeberry and Guy Harris. They're, they're both consultants. Uh, Kevin started his own consultancy called the Kevin Eukenberry uh, Group. And Guy is one of the partners over there. So, so they created this book from Bud to Boss. It's really about going from an individual contributor role into a management, into a leadership position. And essentially the whole book is that transition that you need to make from leadership are from individual contributor to a leader. So the book really starts off a little bit about uh, that transition, some of the challenges that you may have, some of the things that they're, they're gonna happen within, in the book. So it talks a little bit about that. Then, it, it, then we transition into uh, communication and change management and how all those sort of things happen. They dig into something called DISC, D-I-S, which is a communication tool. It's a wonderful program. You can do your own DISC profile online for uh, like 20 bucks or so. It's a really useful insight, really simple tool to you in, in a way to help you communicate better with others. Uh, after that, they talk a little bit about forming teams, how do teams get together, how do teams happen, how do teams get together and form. After that, we talk a little bit about communications and achieving success beyond that first initial management role. So some of the key insights that I had learned from the book, I've been taking some notes here, so I'm just looking at them as we go. But one of the, uh, the big things that I learned was the, the whole idea of change management. And there's really four levers within the change management process. That first lever being satisfaction with the status quo. Are you satisfied with it? And one of the big things that they pointed out in the book is that change is a choice. Change is a choice. You can always choose to change and you can always choose not to change. It's totally up to you. Now, as a manager, your job is to try and help influence people. Remember, the only thing that you can do is influence your own behaviors and action. And so they talk a lot about the circle of influence, which you probably heard of from um, Stephen Covey's book, Seven habits of highly effective people. Now, they talk a little bit about that. So the change management perspective, go back to the, uh, the levers that I was talking about. So the first lever is satisfaction with the status quo. Help people understand that, you know, the new thing that they're gonna be doing, that thing that we're changing to, is better than the status quo. Help them understand, uh, create some dissatisfaction as well with the status quo. Um, the second, lever that they, they talk about is the um, is vision. So what does this future look like? What is the new thing going to look like? The 
third item we talk a little bit in the book is um, we talked a little bit about static quote. We talked a little, little bit about um, seeing the vision. And now we want to understand what are the first steps. Some people get stuck on that first step. How do I actually go about making this change happen? And, and then finally, that last lever is the cost benefit. Help people see the cost benefit, see that the change that they're going to make is going to have that benefit. And sometimes that means you have to create more of a benefit within those three other levers that we talked about just a minute ago. So that's change. The next thing that uh, I really got from this book was thinking about how teams form. How do teams get together and form? They, there's really a four step process. First thing is forming, that team gets together, they form. The next thing that happens is they, they storm. They start having a little bit of challenges. They start trying to communicate with each other and don't always um, get together on that, that thing. The next thing that happens within the team is called norming. This is where the teams start to get together, they start to communicate well, they start to really understand how each member and everybody's role within the team. So that there's a greater understanding. Um, and then finally, once you got that norming thing, you're gonna really start performing. That team's gonna really start taking off, making things happen. So that is the um, team forming. But part of team forming is figuring out how to get teams to work better together. And one of those things is what they, they talked about is the CARB method. And if teams aren't performing, it's gonna happen because of one of these four areas. And the first thing is, are you committed to the team? Is everybody aligned to the team, aligned to the goals, that vision, that future vision that uh, we just talked about a second ago? The, the next thing is relationship. Does everybody have a good relationship? within the team? Does everybody understand their, their roles within the team? And then finally, it's behavior. Are people acting and behaving in a way that communicates them to the team and that is aligned with the, the goals that uh, we want the team to achieve? Um, the next thing that I really got out of this book was feedback, the whole idea of feedback model and giving people feedback. We, the first big thing is to remember to give more positive feedback then you give negative. In fact, it should be about 12 to 1. So 12 positive feedback to 1 negative feedback, okay? So pile on that positive feedback and watch out for the negative feedback that you give. Um, very, very important in terms of feedback. Um, and as well, when you're giving feedback, don't forget to remember to think of objective behavior. Focus on the behavior, not the person. And finally, the last thing that I really got out of this book is to remember to have a commitment to success. And that also means expecting a lot out of the people that uh, you manage. So those are all the things that I got. Great introduction into management if you are shifting into a managerial role or if you've been in one for a little while and are still trying to figure it out and try how to make everything happen. Uh, I, I certainly recommend the book. Um, check it out from Bud the Boss, and we'll see you next time.